Greetings, my brothers and sisters. Welcome back to God's classroom of how you're learning. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, we want to especially take this opportunity to welcome you to the Vine and Branch World Ministries Bible Study Session, which is held weekly in God's classroom of how you learn. Well, we bring them in, train them up, and send them out into the world to make disciples. So welcome to each one of you, where we will be teaching the Word of God. Well, many will understand it, will grasp it, take hold of it, and be obedient servants, and go into the world and do God's will. Where well, others will not understand it, will not understand the type of teaching that we bring forth here. But understand that this one thing, and that is we teach the truth from the Word of God. As the Word of God is found in the book of John 8.32, which says, Know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But also when we look over there in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 14, the Bible tells us this, but a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them, because they are spiritually appraised. But for those of you who have listened to our taped broadcast, and studied our thousands of lessons all through the years, you will understand the importance of this type of Bible teaching, where I have stated over and over again these words. You must come to know who you are, who God is, and who you are in God. Because if you don't know who you are, that is no one your real identity, Satan, the old devil uh, himself, will come in and he will destroy your life. Look what he did with Adam uh, and Eve because they did not know their true identity. They disobeyed God and they ate from the tree which God had told them not to eat from. They got kicked out of the garden of Eden. But when he tried the same thing on Jesus, Jesus turned the tables on him and told him to go get lost because he knew that he knows who he is. You see, my brothers and sisters, you got to know who you are, who you are in God, and who God is in you. That is, know your real identity and proclaim it loud and clear. I am a spirit being. This, my brothers and sisters, is what today's lesson is all about. It is about teaching you who you are. You are truly a spirit being. And how are you going to really know that you are a spirit being? That you are a tripod individual? How are you going to to know that you are a spirit with a soul that lives in a body? Well, you see, when you look over there in the book of John, you're looking at uh, uh, chapter four, uh, at verse 24, the Bible clearly says to us, God is spirit. God is spirit, 
and they who worship uh, him must worship him in truth and in spirit. That is knowing the truth. The Bible says, know the truth and the truth will set you free. You have to believe that the word of God is truth. And you have to understand that you are truly a spirit. Now we're going to show you in the word how you are a spirit, which a lot of you will not understand. I myself for many years uh, really never knew that I was a spirit being. In reading the scripture, it was part of the scripture that I read through and not being able to comprehend. And I know that many of you do the same. Many of you that have sat in our classes have told me how it did not enter into your mind what the word of God was really saying to you because you skipped over it. And then you went over to the part where God talked about scooping down and picking up uh, dirt from the earth and molding it and shaping it and then breathing the breath of life and man became a living soul. Well, today we want to teach you how you are truly a spirit being. So if we go over to the book of Genesis, so let's go there now. Turn your Bibles over to the book of Genesis, and we want to look at Genesis, the first chapter. In the first chapter, we want to look at the 26th and the 27th verse. And this is what the Bible says uh, in verse 26, it says, then God said, listen to clearly how God speaks. He said, the Bible says, then God says, let us, who is he talking about? He's talking about the Father, the Son, uh, and the Holy Spirit. He says, let us make man in our image in our image accordingly to our likeness. Not a, not a, a, a physical likeness, uh, but a spiritual personality uh, and moral likeness. That is what uh, a God is talking about as he, as he, as he speaks clearly truth uh, 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 to power. And then he, he said, having uh, a complete authority over the fish uh, of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, and over the entire earth, and over everything that creeps and crawls on the earth. Let us make man in our own image. Let us, the image of God is what? It is Spirit, as we said before, in verse uh, in John the fourth chapter, the twenty fourth verse, the Bible clearly tells us that God is spirit. Now, look down there at verse twenty seven. In verse twenty seven, the Bible says, "So God created man in His own image." God created man in his own image, in the image and likeness of God. He created him, male and female, he created them. God is spirit. Now, I want you to turn uh, in your Bibles to the book of Job, and let's look at uh, chapter 32 and verse 8. Uh, in the King James Bible, the Bible says this, but there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. 
there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. You are a spirit being. I am a spirit being. You are a spirit that has a soul that lives in this body. You are a tripod. You are a tripod individual, a three-part individual. You see, it is the spirit that is in man that lets you know who you are. It is the spirit that's in you that lets you know who you are. The spirit that lets you know who God is and the spirit that lets you know who you are in God. You are a tripod individual. Now, turn your Bibles over to the book of of 1 Thessalonians. We want to look at uh, a look here at uh, chapter 5 and verse uh, uh, 23. The book of uh, 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 23. And this is what the Bible says to us. It says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through. That is, separate you from profane and vulgar things, make you pure and whole and undamaged, consecrated to him, set you apart for his purpose, for God's own purpose. And this is what's very important. And may your spirit, underline that word, May your soul, underline that word, and your body be kept complete and be found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, may your spirit, your soul, and your body, three different parts of you, you are a spirit being that has a soul that lives in a body. The three parts of man, once again, is the spirit, the soul, and the body. Now, as you turn your Bibles back uh, to the book of Genesis, we look down there at Genesis uh, uh, chapter 2 and uh, verse 7. The Bible states that man was created as a living soul. Man was created as a living soul. Now this is different from uh, Genesis 1, 26 and 27, where God created man uh, uh, as a spirit. And man was first created as a spirit. Then after God created him, uh, as a spirit, then God goes over and he creates him now as a, 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 a living soul. A living soul, the soul consists of the mind. The soul consists of the mind, which includes uh, the consciousness, your consciousness, uh, your will, your intellect, uh, and your emotions. That's what your soul consists of. Okay, now the the soul and the spirit, your soul and your spirit, are mysteriously tied together and make up what the scriptures call the heart. You see, this thing here, our heart. This is this is a physical aspect of the physical body that beats and pumps the blood throughout the systems of the body. Now, your body is, is made up of the five senses. That is the sense of smell, the sense of taste, the sense of sight, the sense of hearing. All of these make up the human body, okay? Now, your heart, once again, is made up of your consciousness, or your intellect, your emotions, and your will. 
man is a tripod. A man is a three-pod individual, which is the spirit, the soul, and the body. Now, let's turn now to the book of 1 Corinthians, and we want to look at chapter 2 and down there at verse 14. Well, the Bible says this, but a natural man, once again, does not accept the things of the Spirit, the things of the Spirit of God. That is the natural man. That is the man that not has not been reborn again. That has not accepted Jesus uh, as their Lord and Savior. You're living in the natural. So it's very difficult for you to accept this type of teaching that you are a spirit, you are a tripod individual. It's very difficult for you to accept that. It was difficult for me to accept it when I was first began to be taught that I am a tripod individual. I am a three-part individual. I am a spirit being. You see, when we think about it, the division of the soul and the spirit, the division of the soul and the spirit. Now, let's look over there in the book of Numbers chapter 16, and we're going to look at verse 22. Well, the Bible says this to us. It says, Moses and Aaron fell upon their faces and said, Moses and Aaron fell upon their faces and said, O oh God, God of the spirits of all flesh, when one man sins, will you be angry with the entire congregation? When one man sins, will you be angry with the entire congregation? You see, my brothers and sisters, this verse names God as the God of the spirits that are possessed by all humanity. Notice also that uh, it mentions the flesh as well. Body, which is the body. The flesh is is the body of all mankind, and which it connects, connected it with the spirit. Another key verse uh, that describes the separation between soul and spirit can be found in the book of Hebrews. So let's turn to the book of Hebrews, uh, uh, chapter 4, uh, and verse 12. And when we look down here at uh, verse 12, this is what the Bible says to us. It says, for the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit. That is the word of God. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. So, so when you think about a sword, a two-edged sword, or that it can cut both to the right and to the left. It can cut and split anything wide open. The word of God is sharper than that two-edged sword. So the word of God can, can cut deep down into the soul and it will be dividing the soul from the spirit of both joints and marrows and able to judge the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. Is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. You see, we see in this passage of scripture that the soul and spirit can be divided and that it is the word of God that pierces our heart to bring the division of soul and spirit, something that only God can do. It is the word of God 
the word of God that brings division of the soul and the spirit, which once again is separated from the body. The word of God. And when the word of God is deep in to our soul, it can transform our thinking, which will help bring the body in line with the spirit, the spirit of God. Now, we're going to close this lesson out for today. And we're going to close it out by going to the book of Psalms, chapter 139 and verse 13. And when we go to chapter 139, verse 13, as human beings, we live eternally as a spirit. As human beings, we live eternally as a spirit. We have a soul and we dwell in a body. We can rejoice with the sunless and declare, for you formed my inward parts. You moved me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you, for I am a fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very, very well. My brothers and sisters, that is our Bible study uh, for this day. May God add a blessing to his word, a blessing to the doer of his word, and a blessing to the hearer of his word. You are truly a spirit being that has a soul and lives in a body. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters. Be strong and be courageous until we meet again in God's classroom of how you learn.